everybody, it is Brooke with The Junk Parlor and I am hopping on the channel to do a little um, shopping haul with you. So I hit up Thrifty Flea that is located in Des Moines. I went to Thrift Mart, which is also in Des Moines and they have just recently opened. So this was my first time going and whoa, am I so glad that I did. And then I went to another place that I had been before, really a hole in the wall, and the owner was actually there and they are getting kicked out. So he had a lot of deals. Um, he will be there probably for about another month. So I'll probably go back and try and hit some, him up for some more deals as well. But it is definitely a hole in the wall kind of place. So that's probably why I normally just have driven by it in the past. Um, but today I decided to stop and then I had a little bit of time because I was having a lunch date with a girlfriend and so I stopped by Brass Armadillo even though I feel like I've gone there once a week for a while but I really wanted to see what I could find and I knew I only had um, like an hour I think almost to the dot and so I was just speed shopping because if you've ever been to Brass Armadillo or like an Artichoke Annie's or an antique mall. They're big and they take a lot of time to shop. And so I was more like skimming and trying to go as fast as I could so I could at least get through the whole thing in that hour that I had. So then I go to the lunch date and we were at different locations. So we stopped at the flame um, and I was here in Ankeny, she went to Johnston. So we got our signals crossed a little bit and we are going to reschedule, but it was delicious. And because I had such an amazing um, haul today and no one is home, I'm gonna show you what I got. Okay, let me know down in the comments if you like me to sort out things based off of where I purchased them. Um, I'm gonna do that today, um, but let me know in the comments what you like and be sure to click that subscribe button. So this is the hole in the wall place that will only be there for another month. And I got literally an empty box. You might be like, Brooke, why'd you get an empty box? And I would be like, cause I wanted to, <laughs> because I loved the tartan pattern and it says Mr. Ice Crusher, loved it. You could put this in your bar for like alcoholic drinks. You could do it in a kid's area. Um, I don't know, I just liked it. And there was like an ice cream, or not an ice cream, there was like some kind of ice thing in there, but it was broken. So I just left it and put it in the bucket. Then I got a wooden spoon. This one is ginormous and um, it is all chipped and worn, which I love um, because it shows that it was used and it has some good age on it. But I liked it because it was so big. There were a couple other ones that were super small. All right, I have a clipboard girl and she's gonna love this one because it's all beat up and rough and small and I mean, I don't even know, can you even tell what the heck is going on there? There's like some kind of hole with a spring, someone welded, <laughs> I don't know, but I liked it. Then I got two silver pitchers. Okay, so I think it's showing on the camera. See how this one has like a blue um, hue to it, like however it has tarnished is bluish. This one is like pinkish. I mean, I don't know. I think it's gorgeous. I love it. So anyway, this one I just thought was a super unique shape. So I grabbed it. And then this one, I love when they have feet. So I grabbed it and I loved how they tarnished kind of weird and randomly. Um, and so I grabbed it. Love the shape of this. You could put brushes in here. You could put your little cotton swabs, even though you're not supposed to use them. You could put straws. You could put a little plant. Um, you could put spoons. I mean, like sky's the limit on the little things you can put in here, but what a sexy shape. Put it on a peg rack. I mean, shapes, just get it for me. Okay, then this is probably a sugar bowl. Probably had a lid on it, but what does it look like? It looks like a trophy cup. 
a little loving cup and so I grabbed it. It also has a unique bottom to it and we know my eyes, I probably need to take my contacts out so I can actually read this thing, but look at that. It's like got a stamp, uh, stamped piece in it, on it. And so does this one. Let's see if I can read this one. It has 1856, but I can't tell you what that, I mean, that I can see the number, but there's a couple words right there. You probably can't see them either unless your eyes are way better than mine. So I think these actually might go together. So I bought them just because I liked the shape individually, but they got the same little features. But again, cotton swabs, cotton balls, sweetener packets, um, plants, your bottle brush trees, little pumpkins stacked when it is um, fall. So many options. Okay, I got this enamel basin. I like it, it already has a hole here so you can hang it on the wall if you want. You can put this by your bathtub with towels rolled up. Um, tons of fun things for an enamel basin. And then this one is a little bit different. It's got the black um, trim and it does have handles. So again, there's no hole but you can um, hang this with like an S hook or something because it has handles. So put this in your laundry room on top of your dryer or your washing machine with your little Tide detergent and your bounce dryer sheets. Um, you can tell what we use at our house. And um, you, know, you could even put extra paper towels or your cleaning supplies if you have those housed in your laundry room, because I do. So that was everything from the hole in the wall. Okay, now we are going to reveal what I got at Brass Armadillo. So I'm not gonna let you see that yet. I'm gonna start with the small. So this receipt holder was just too good a deal to pass up. This receipt holder, same thing. These are great to put your, um, those long ornaments on. They probably have a name. I don't know what the name is. I'll show you one here. Another butter press to add to my collection. I won't reveal showing you me putting them into the candy dish because I do that pretty much every time, right? Okay, then I got this little creamer or ironstone pitcher transferware. It's the brown transferware but look at the freaking coloring on it, the crackling, the patina. It says artesian granite, wash, Parisian, <laughs> Parisian granite, the stamp for a P&W are up a little bit. Washington pattern, Alfred Meekin, England, but loved it. Now, funny thing about this is that I got some other brown transfer wear pieces from the thrift store. So I'm guessing since they were in the same vicinity, that probably, was there something just fuzzing up, floating up there? That um, probably she got the, the creamer, the pitcher at the thrift store and left the other dishes that I um, grabbed, but who knows? Okay, are you ready? Are you ready for the best thing that I bought? <laughs> and it came with a bunch of tissue paper so I can use it for packing. So I think it's an apple crate. Um, this side got painted over the label and this side has a big knot in the S, but that's okay. It's still great, great writing. And then over here, yep, it says um, apples. Selected Yakima apples from and to. So that would be fun, like if you gifted it to somebody, you could use permanent marker and write their name. But hello, this was the best thing. So I'm so glad that I went to Brass Armadillo again, even though I feel like I've been going all of the time. Okay. You're not even gonna wanna see this. We're moving to the floor. So they were looking through this box when I got there. Again, this was my first time ever going. And I said, oh, did you get some new Christmas stuff to put out? 
Um, and they're like, yep, this just came in. And I was like, ooh, well, how much do you want for the whole box? And they told me and I said sold. And then they had thrown this um, garland away and she, they were, it was two of them, they were talking. And so one of them went and dug it out and said, hey, do you want this too? And I'm like, uh, yeah, hello. So I never even went through the box, but you can see enough here to know that it's a good box, right? So we've got some shiny brights here. The box isn't complete, but if you looked at the box from the front or the back side, it looks good. We have some more shiny brights. There's a little bitty ornament in there. Great color. Great box again, not perfect on one end, but still good enough. We have some Micro Star Delta ornaments, again in a good box. Again, one box seems to be a little bit more, or one end seems to be a little bit more damaged than the others. These are things like we used to have church ornaments, church made ornaments. We've got some of these plastic ornaments. There's some little beads in there. Don't be dropping and breaking stuff. But... And that one bulb, I think that's all that's in there. But again, a jewel bright box. So you can always come up with ways to repurpose that. And then look at this box. Holy buckets. It's like in good condition. Someone hasn't written all over it. They haven't put tape all over it. Let's see what color the ornaments are. Ooh, an assortment. So very pretty. And then this looks like another shiny bright box. Again, good condition. Not written all over and not what that plastic's from not damaged. Don't want to damage it. Opening it with one hand. Let's see what ornaments we have on the inside. Ugh, having difficulties. Oh, oh, freaking awesome. Merry Christmas, Silent Night. Gorgeous. Okay, we've got a newer box, the pyramid that has all the red in it. We have this. Let me get that one out. Another um, shiny bright. This one's got pink. Well, it looks like there's one red one. Again, one box end is not in the best condition, but I'm almost thinking that it just needs to be refolded. You know how your cereal box pops open? Looks like there's, oh, there's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. They're all spilling out. Again, a good box. And you know what? I have another box um, of little ones like this. And it's funny because see how the box is kind of like puckered and stuff and, and twisted? That's how mine is too. And I've tried to shape it and get it back into shape, but or bend it and weigh it down with stuff and get it back into shape, but nothing seems to happen. So some more little bulbs. Look like maybe one is broken out of all that. Amazing. Amazing. And then another good condition, shiny bright box with ornaments. I mean, if that doesn't make your heart happy when you go thrifting, I don't know what will. And it also makes me think of my friend Michelle at Pamela's Vintage. Um, I think a similar thing happened to her too. Hers was an entire plastic tote of Christmas goodies and she just had showed up at the thrift store at the right time. Okay, now I know a lot of vintage resellers will hold all of their Christmas goodies until the next season. I am typically not like that, but I'm curious if you resell stuff, 
Let me know in the comments below, do you normally hoard your Christmas stuff until it is Christmas again? I forgot to put something in there. <laughs> I totally lucked out on that because it wasn't a breakable. So at Thrift Mart, they were also having 50% off Christmas. They were having 25% off of white tag things and maybe yellow tag things. Um, and they had a lot. So they had a lot of like stuff and they had a lot of clothes. And um, if you like to dig, you would really like Thrift Mart too because they have a lot of like retail, um, oh, like, like an island and then under the island when you go to some retail stores, there's drawers you pull out and like everything sorted. A lot of times it's normally like a, in a linen section. So they have that and then you can pull out those drawers and you can, um, you know, dig through because they have a lot of linens, but they also just have random stuff um, shoved into those cubbies as well. I got a few things. I mean, Christmas stuff obviously was 50% off and then some of my things were um, discounted as well. So I took these out of the bag just because, um, look, they fit into my little creamer that I picked earlier, kind of. Um, but these are some old um, clothespins. I really don't need any because I tell you I have like 50 million clothespins right now. Um, but I liked them. They were a good price. So I went ahead and bought them. Um, they had a ton that I left there that had the um, metal uh, going around them. And then just in case you are new to my channel or new to watching me um, on social, one of the things you can do when you put a bunch of like um, clothes pins into something like this, um, you can do them in a cheese box too. They look li nice lined up there, but you can stick your one of your clothes pins down here and um, then you can put pictures or whatever, which I have nothing that would work, but you can put a picture and slide it into that slit of the clothespin. And there you have a different way to display things. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Guess what I got? So it was $22.99 and it was on sale 25%. I think that is a great, great price. I love, I don't even know what the pattern is on this one. It's some kind of flower or leaf, but I love it. And I love the detail on the handle. I mean, <sighs> I had a good day today. That's all I can say is I had a good day today. And then I know Halloween stuff is super popular. The, these are still in the container. I'm still gonna keep them in the container. I looked everywhere to find a year on the back. I couldn't, um, but Halloween is super popular, so I know those will sell at least at some point. And then it's funny because literally it's only been, I think I got this stuff at like 10 o'clock, it's two o'clock, and I've already forgotten what I got. Oh, this is maybe not vintage, but it's um, handmade, and that is a quail, I'm pretty sure. My dad used to hunt quail, and um, I just loved it. So it's on this raw chunk of wood, and then it's carved, and um, I just like the look, and then I really like naturals, and I um, like animals. I think it'll just be a great piece for somebody to decorate with either year round or in the fall. Oh, I got a ton of these Santa mugs. So I do not think, well, I don't think, I know they're not old, but they were 50% off. And you know what everybody's doing with the vintage Santa mugs is taking the paint off. I can even find any of the other ones. And so I thought, well, I would rather take paint off of newer mugs than older mugs. 
and I really have been looking for them like out thrifting, like even newer ones that had a look that I liked because oftentimes I just, I don't like the look. So even if they were white, I wouldn't like the look. And so I keep, you know, skipping over them. But today I was like, oh, these are such a good price. I mean, they're a dollar each. So if I strip them and I think that they're still ugly, it's like, no, nope, no harm. And these already look like some of the paint is coming off because like red shouldn't be there. So it already got transferred somehow. So anyway, that is on my to-do list. The other thing that I got at Thrift Mart, which I totally recommend going to, they also have a rewards program. The people working, there were like three of them, super nice. They obviously have made a lot of relationships, built a lot of relationships with their customers, which I think is like a key to being a good store, whether you're a thrift store or not. So remember that picture? Here is basically the equivalent in these brown transfer wearables. Nor notice that the one is crazed. So this is another theory that I have. I'm going to strip these and then just like set them outside. Maybe not when it's freezing, but just to see if they age faster. Because I mean, look at the crackling on that one. And then the rest of them are not really crackled. So all of them have some damage. So these two actually look okay, but for the price, it didn't really bother me um, because everywhere that they're damaged, like if you see the bottom there, if you stack these like I just had them, then you don't even know that that part is chipped. Here's the one that's the worst one and they definitely had, see, it's all glued. So that had all chunked off. I mean, I don't know who took the time to glue it because that seems like a little bit of an overkill. And then there is another chip down here on the bottom of it. But you can totally stack these. You can, um, I like, oh, look at that, how that lined up, that's funny. Um, you can do some little books and stand them up in here. You can do plants. You can do the um, clothes pins. You can do things that you keep in your bathroom, bottles or washcloths rolled up with a bar of soap. You know what I mean? So many options. So that's everything I got. Oh brother, there goes the dog. Oh, I think the bag had the name on it. Definitely check Thrift Mart out. Okay, Bella barking is one of the reasons that I never do anything upstairs. <laughs> Cause you can even hear her in the basement. Okay, so I bought a lot. Um, meaning it was a boxed lot of a bunch of medical supplies. So hello, this is awesome. Red Cross, Cotton, Johnson & Johnson. I do not save all the Johnson & Johnson stuff I buy because Johnson is just, just too common of a name and there's just too much stuff. So this looks like it's hinged. I'm just trying to be careful. Oh, it is not hinged. And it's got the tape in it. So the tape must come, it says cotton dispenser. So a roll of cotton, I don't know. And then you cut it off. But the inside of that is awesome. Okay, we got a cool bottle, tablet, try, try to rates. <laughs> Boric and Taffel um, pharmacists. So B and T quantity. It doesn't give a town, which is a bummer. Still has the cork in it. Looks like it was some kind of powdered pill. We've got boric acid crystals, Memphis, Tennessee. So you could put that in your laundry room or your bathroom. Syrup of black drought. Well, it's drought, drought, drought. Do not subscribe if my pronunciation always butchering stuff, tortures you. Uh, made in St. Louis, says New York, made in the USA and St. Louis. Sloan's ointment, love that guy's beard. We got Epsom salt, 
Um, this is a Des Moines, Iowa Des Moines drug company. Love the coloring on it. Even has writing on the lid. Nalls baby laxative. Uh, I don't recommend giving that to your child. This still has like the little pumper on it. It's an amber bottle. I mean, the pumper looks new, but I still like like it. If you had a medicine cabinet, you could put a little um, display in there. Some more Epsom salt with salt in it. Nylamorate. Manufactured in the U.S. New Jersey, I think is what it says. Again, I need to be wearing my glasses so I can take them off and read. Although the crazy thing is, is that the last time I went to the eye doctor, she said, oh, you you got like perfect vision. She's like, probably you're trying to put it too close to your face. And it's like, I can't see it. This is a Clear Lake medicine bottle. It's got a paper label on it. Alcohol external use, rubbing alcohol external use. E.L. Wurzer is the paper label. That one's a cool bottle. All right, we got a box that says Bryant splints. Hey, we needed one of these finger splints for uh, one of the kids. I think Cash during wrestling hurt his finger or football. Oh, there's a whole, whole assortment of sizes in there, it looks like. This is a cool tin, this Raleigh's Soothing Antiseptic. I've never seen one with like these um, leaves or flowers. We've got some NR tablets. Uh, veget vegetable laxative, St. Louis, Missouri. I guess that side's not very good, but the other side is good. Another Epsom salt. We have Vaseline, Blue Seal, Carbolated. Never even heard of Carbolated. It looks like there's probably some in it. Another in our tablets. A little vegetable laxatives. Ooh. Zona's Adhesive Plaster. Love, I don't know if you can see, it's like red, white, and blue little pattern. A great tin. This one is Tiger Balm. This looks definitely newer. We have Pure Castor Oil, Beers Drugstore. Oh, Centerville, Iowa. Say, I know a guy that likes Centerville, Iowa bottles. Not sure. West side of Centerville Square. Wonder where that would have been. Met Mexican Mustang Liniment Nye Ion Manufacturing Company, New York. Never seen one that says Mexican. I've seen one that says Liniment. This one is Vapor, a Rexall, and it's got a good cork. This one is another Vaseline, camphor ice, yellow, blue, good coloring. This one's Dental Floss, Milford, Delaware. So you can see the roll of Dental Floss, or I can, maybe you can or can't on the camera. Eardrops, Spirit Lake, Iowa. These are in a gorgeous blue um, dropper bottle. Outgrow ingrown nails. You know, luckily out of all the ailments that I ever have, I don't get in ingrown nails very much. Kansas City, San Francisco, New York, Kalamazoo, Phenolax. This one is Mercury Chrome. I thought that one normally said danger on it. I feel like I've had that one before. Here is a stopper bottle that's all shriveled up and doesn't work. Murrine for your eyes from the Murrine Company. And this was the last one in the lot and the label's pretty much off. Allen Chemical, New York, something I'm guessing for the eyes, but who knows? I'd have to read on it a little bit longer. No, no cork in that one. So that was one lot of goodies. And these are things that I got from Thrifty Flea.
So I um, have been going there. This is probably like my fourth week in a row. I don't think I went over Christmas, but I've been kind of looking at these ink bottles and trying to decide if I wanted to get them or not. And this time I got them. And the reason is, is because the glass is aqua. And I love that. I think it looks really good sitting in a windowsill. So until they sell, that's probably where they're going to go. And I just shared my windowsill on Instagram last night, but when we get done here, I'll show you a little quick view of it. So two of these are Mark Sanford on the bottom and one of them is not. Um, but so two of them, these two kind of match. This one's a very iridescent rainbow look. I don't know if you can tell that. Um, they're both very cloud, or all are very cloudy, but I like it. So I got it. And then this is like just an old bottle, super heavy, um, probably as clean as it's ever going to get, very bulbous. And it says J, L, and C, or J, L, and Corp on the bottom with some number, 1391. I, I need to research that a little bit. But again, that would look good sitting with those ink um, ink wells on my kitchen counter. So, or on my sink, on the windowsill of my sink. Okay, so then we have this copper kettle. So it's in good shape, all the pieces are there. And then one thing that I've never seen in any of the ones that I've personally had, this one is marked Majestic. So I don't know, I just really liked it. It's a nice size with the black handle and I thought I could resell it, so I grabbed it. This jar, of course it caught my eye because, bing, bing, the green. I love the green. It's a little bit of a smaller um, jug. It's got the old bale handle. You could put so many things in here. Right now I have a ton of thimbles. I could put my little butter presses that I collect. Um, you could do Scrabble tiles, um, game blocks, game pieces, keys, dice would be awesome. Oh, and I should show you, I have a jar that's not pretty but it has a ton of old um, light bulbs. So some of them are from cameras, some of them are from like overhead pro projectors, some are probably from automobiles and whatever else takes a light um, lamp, light, light bulb. Um, so since I'm blip, blip, blip stuttering, guess what that means? It means it's time to be done. And it's a good thing because that is everything that I grabbed today. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments. I think that was a good day's worth of stuff. So if you like seeing what I pick up, if you like going antique shopping, be sure to click that subscribe button. Until next time, see you guys. And just a little view out the window. I did go ahead and stick in my ink wells that I just grabbed. This is a little clipping I just stuck in here probably a couple days ago um, because it was getting kind of leggy. I keep my sheep out from my nativity um, all year long because I like them. Here is basically the only little butter pat that I have out that is not in my candy dish. And then these little pottery pieces, I just really like them. Um, when I was on a pick, one of the daughters, we were going through their parents' house, um, did dabbled in pottery and I just really liked the miniature petite size and coloring and so I added those and then I had my um this tree topper star with our nativity um this year out on display and so I just liked it it's a neutral color something to decorate with for winter and stars have a pl special place in my heart because um, our son that passed away, he, we had his room decorated in stars. I have a tattoo of stars. His headstone is stars. And so I like to have stars out. Oh my gosh, guys. So for most of December, I've really felt like I can leave the house. I know that might sound silly, but with moving and trying to get things situated and get into some kind of rhythm with work 
and trying to get the built-ins in my living room done. Um, I just haven't felt like I could leave the house and I really haven't had any desire to leave the house. So let's just be honest there. But for whatever reason, month of December, even though you'd think it'd be crazy hectic, I left the house. So I've started a new thing where I am going to hit up some shops every Thursday. So that means I will take you along shopping with me a lot and or show you my haul. So today I hit a jackpot. I mean, I probably spent way too much money and bought too many things because I'm really, and I know I say this all of the time, but I'm really trying to buy less stuff, buy less inventory because I'm not selling live on Facebook like I used to. And so the outlet to sell is like less, but if you see good things, you got to buy them, right? 